The question is about the rationale on the Violence Against Women Act. All of us are against violence against women. You know, I mean, it, it's sort of like the thing when they set these votes up in, in Washington is sort of the implication is if you don't vote for my federal bill to federalize these things, you're somehow for violence against women. Nobody's for that, Republican or Democrat. We're all against violence against women. There is some disagreement in the parties, though, about where it should be adjudicated, whether or not uh, you know rape should be a federal crime or a state crime. Crimes historically, all crimes, ones that we're all opposed to, murder and rape and sexual assault, they're, they're state crimes. They're tried in state court. And I think they should remain in state court because I think justice is better meted out in state court than federal court. Federal court should be, you know, if it's kidnapping across state lines or some, some kind of sexual trafficking across state lines, there is a role for the federal government. But for the most part, crime should be solved at the state level because I think you have better, a uh, better justice system at the state level for criminal activity. Anybody else? Yes. The Benghazi thing has really bothered me as well. Uh, for six months leading up to the attack, the ambassador, the people on the ground all asked for additional security and it was denied. Um, they asked for a DC-3 plane back in May of 2012 and it was denied. Now they said ostensibly it was because of cost. I don't believe them. I think it was, it was a misjudgment and a, and a terrible error of judgment that they didn't provide more security. The same summer they denied a plane for movement around the country or escape from the country, they approved $100,000 for an electrical charging station in Vienna at the embassy because they were greening up the embassy to show off how much we love you know, uh, solar panels and electric cars. $100,000 we spent. That same summer we spent $100,000, this is State Department money, sending three comedians to India on the Make Chai Not War tour. So three comedians telling jokes and promoting American culture, $100,000, but we didn't have enough money for a plane in Libya. There was a 16-person security team led by Colonel Wood. He said repeatedly and has testified that he requested to stay. The ambassador wanted his team to stay. They were denied the ability to stay also. The same summer all of this went on, the State Department spent $650,000 on Facebook ads to get more friends for their Facebook. So we're not providing security for an ambassador. At the same time, we're spending $650,000 on Facebook ads. We spent $80 million that same year on a consulate in Mashar al-Sharif in the northern part of Afghanistan, which will never be used. Why? Because after they spent $80 million, someone looked up and discovered that the consulate was surrounded by tall buildings on all sides that could shoot down into their courtyard, and it's uninhabitable. It was deemed a security risk after they spent $80 million sprucing it up. It's, it's just ineptness. And to me, the biggest problem with Benghazi wasn't the talking notes and the talking points. It was that they were asking and pleading for more security and it was denied. And I asked Hillary Clinton the point blank question, did you read the cables from from Benghazi, and she said she was too busy, she, was, she didn't have time to. That's inexcusable. And really, if they only rose up to someone two levels beneath her and never got to her, I think that's precisely her culpability. It's your job when you're the leader of the team to know what you should hear and what you should not hear. Libya's gotta be one of the five most dangerous countries in the world. And your ambassador sends you a telegram, or a cable as they call it, asking for more security and you don't read it, you have one of your underlings reading it? That's like being the ER doctor and a guy's sitting in the waiting room with 105 degree temperature and say, and his neck hurts, and you say, oh well, uh, it's not my job, the nurse made a mistake by not getting it back to him, it's all, all their fault. No, it's the responsibility of the doctor to make sure the nurse knows the parameters and gets the patient back to you. The triage is ultimately who's in charge. 
But no, I've been really thoroughly disgusted with the Benghazi thing. It's not done yet. I think that there's going to be more hearings, but it has to be on the House side. The, 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 the Democrats in the Senate are not interested in any more hearings. But I think the House side, you may still see more hearings. I would also like to know, there were Marines in Tripoli that were told not to go to Benghazi. I want to know who made that order. Did they do it on their own, or did they do it in consultation with a politician? I mean, if any of you are Marines in the audience, Marines are famous for rescuing their wounded and even their dead, putting their life on the line. I don't see one of them, and they say the colonel in, in Tripoli was visibly uh, upset with the fact that he was told by somebody he couldn't go to Benghazi. So I think something else happened here. I continue to think that what was going on in Benghazi and what they were trying to cover up was a gun running operation in Syria. The New York Times has reported now that the CIA for a year has been involved with sending arms to Syria, and interestingly, the person they point to in the administration to say that was the biggest advocate of sending arms to Syria was Hillary Clinton, who told me she knew nothing about it, had never heard of such a thing. Thanks for having me.